Hello and welcome to Key Stage 3 English. This is on Persuade, Argue and Advise. So let's read these uh, key points together. Let's start with number one. So right to persuade or argue requires a special approach. First, brainstorm arguments for and against. This may change your views. If not, it will at least prepare you for counter arguments, arguments against your own, in other words. Work out a logical order in which to present your case. Numbering could be possible or even bullet points for that matter. You may find it most effective to save your best arguments till last. And it's always good to leave your best arguments till last. Where possible, supply evidence. For example, if, there are, if you're quoting statistics or numbers, you should always provide the source of evidence where those numbers and statistics are coming from. Because if you're just going to label some statistics, the reader not, may not uh, believe where those statistics have come from. Quotations, uh, while not proving your case, will add support to it. Quotations are also very, very important. Part two, signposting, using link words and phrases to guide your reader, especially important in persuasive writing. Uh, phrases such as however, nonetheless, despite, on the other hand, are very useful. For counter arguments, phrases such as although in reality, the facts are quite the opposite. In fact, the case are useful. These, some of these counter argument phrases are also very useful. Phrases such as giving emphasis are also useful, either adjectives or adverbs, ending in ly type of words are also really good. So some examples have been listed here for you, such as ludicrous, appalling, remarkable, astonishing, incredible, important, huge, above all, absolute, vital, and essential. So when you're contradicting yourself or when you're providing counter arguments or even persuasive arguments, it's always, use, it's always good to use different synonyms and different words rather than repeating the same words over and over again. Let's move on to point number three. So spelling is a special kind of persuasion. Um, so selling, in this case, consider why your target audience should be interested. Emphasize the reasons for buying your product and consider and possibly end with the risks if they don't buy it. So when you're selling a product as a salesperson, persuasion is very important because you're trying to persuade the buyer to actually buy your products. So you're looking at a certain target audience, uh, what are the reasons for buying this product and the risks if they were not to buy this product. And let's move on to advising. So advising is often similar to persuading. However, it can be more open-ended you may want to help readers decide. So phrases like could, should, might, perhaps, and on the other hand, will be useful. So remember, there are four points with regards to persuade, argue, and advice. Point number one is all about persuading and arguing. Point number two is making sure that you sign pointing um, the reader using the correct link words. Um, this will sell your argument and make it stronger. Uh, point number three is all about selling in persuasion. And point number four is advising and persuading. So brainstorm your arguments or selling points, sort them into the most logical or most compelling order and signpost readers so that they can follow your thinking as well. Now here you've got in total 15 questions from this particular exercise and have a reader at this particular exercise one more time and then answer the follow-up questions. And remember these key points to when you're actually writing or persuading or arguing or advising or even selling for that matter in the future. Good luck, thank you.